Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is a film that constantly keeps its audience on their toes in terms of where we are in time. When Joel Barish decides to have his ex-girlfriend Clementine erased from his memories, we are taken on a journey through their relationship and Joel's subconscious. The film's narrative form therefore relies heavily on manipulating story time, or our chronological construction of story events. By the end, we feel that we have some sense of present and past as pieces begin to fall into place, and Joel and Clementine come to realize that they've had a relationship before, and both erased each other. However, during the last sequence in the film, we are shown these repeated shots in the snow, leaving us to ask, when are we? These final moments create suspense using unrestricted knowledge in order to further disrupt the timeline and suggest that our perception that time always moves forward is a false misunderstanding of how much we're affected by our past. The question, when are we, calls attention to memory and how we return to our past when it is unresolved. First, let's start by breaking down exactly what we see in the final moments of the film. The only real story knowledge we get is what is actually seen and heard, which isn't a lot of information. The suspense of these shots is communicated through the ambiguity of time, and music, and editing. We don't see a title card beforehand that says six months later or any other indicators of time. In terms of setting, this is a place we've visited many times over the course of the film. Specifically, these ending shots line up with this memory, which we were exposed to while Joel and Clementine were running away from the memory erasers. Notice Clementine wearing the exact same distinct red pants. The song that's playing is also one we've heard before, right here, in Joel's car after him and Clementine break up. In his car, the music is diegetic as it plays on a tape he later throws out the window, so another major recall to memory. A sense of ambiguity is also presented through editing, which at first glance makes the characters appear to be moving backwards. If you watch closely, it's actually the same shot played three times, fading a little more each time. First, second, and done. This leaves the audience with an overall air of ambiguity and uncertainty. No matter how you interpret it, the conscious style of these repeated shots, both in time and actual frame, brings about a lingering reminiscence of Joel and Clementine's past relationship. We can think of this ambiguity and suspense as stemming from the use of unrestricted storytelling. Our knowledge is limited in that we don't see that much or know that much, but whether it's the past or the future, it's more than either Joel or Clementine know when the film ends in the present, right here. Because if you'll recall, this memory has been erased for both of them. Bloom is certainly fucking off the rose at this point. Are you screwing with me? No! You Joel, are screwing with me. Joel, I'm not! This is one of the ways that the film uses unrestricted storytelling to create lasting suspense. It gives the audience access to an entire journey and relationship through memory that ends up being erased for the two main characters. Therefore, the audience has unrestricted access to the ending sequence, and understanding of its past relevance leaves us in a moment of suspense, questioning exactly what we're seeing. But why would the film end in this way? Why not here in the hallway where we know exactly where we are in time? I can't see anything that I don't like about you. But you right will. Now, I can't. But you will. These final moments work to disrupt the timeline by not necessarily following our ideas of story time chronologically. Let's consider if the film ended here in the hallway. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Joel and Clementine making some kind of agreement to give it a go. This would emphasize the future more than anything else. It might even suggest that everything they went through was lost in the past, and now they can move on to a new relationship. Instead, by recalling some implication of the past, the ending is representative of the way the film distorts time in order to make meaning. Changing the timeline, keeping the audience on their toes about when we are, is all pointing to the underlying relevance of the past. After all, if the past wasn't significant, Joel would never have returned to Montauk in the first scene and there would essentially be no story. We can also infer that what was unresolved in Joel and Clementine's previous relationship won't magically disappear. It is inevitably built into their present. Remember me. And their future. So maybe how we think of time, always moving forward chronologically, isn't how it works at all. <laughs>